This is the SNARK, the Air Force's intercontinental pilotless bomber. Its guidance system is automatic and self-contained and cannot be jammed by any known countermeasures. The missile operates day and night under all weather conditions. It is designed to deliver a nuclear warhead to targets over intercontinental ranges. Research and development began when the Air Force first outlined its requirements for guided missiles. Already experienced in the pilotless aircraft field, Northrop undertook to fulfill the requirements for a strategic surface-to-surface long-range missile. Preliminary aerodynamic studies resulted in a tailless aircraft with a tapered 45-degree swept-back wing supporting a slender fuselage. This design was required to meet the long-range, high-speed specifications. To guide the unmanned missile, Northrop proposed an automatic navigation and flight control system, accurate and non-jammable. A simple semi-automatic system was tested in a manned P-61 aircraft, conclusively demonstrating the practicability of the system. A network of radar stations was established to monitor the aircraft during flight. Time and again, the guidance system directed a B-29 from Los Angeles to a simulated target at Macon, Georgia. Flights in a B-45 bomber showed increasing accuracy and valuable experience was gained in the mechanics of navigating and controlling a pilotless bomber. Research and testing went on. The shock imposed on the system during launch was simulated on a Northrop-designed acceleration test fixture, the first short-track facility of its kind. Special equipment was constructed for rigorous vibration tests, as well as centrifuge, temperature altitude, humidity, radio noise, and handling shock from which the system emerged ready for installation in the missile and fully capable of withstanding conditions likely to be encountered during strategic use of the SM-62 intercontinental missile. Independent of the guidance program, the airframe was being built and tested. Beginning in 1950 at Alamogordo, New Mexico, the first test missiles were launched. At that time, no booster rockets existed of sufficient power to launch the missile from a standing start. To get the test missiles into the air, a mile-long track was built and a water-breaking system devised to stop the rocket-powered sled from which the missiles were launched. Flight test purposes were to prove the basic SNARK design, to accumulate data on flight and radio control, propulsion and structural characteristics. In the field of unmanned aircraft, this was the most successful and the most extensive test program ever conducted. More than a score of flights were made. Missiles were recovered and flown again. Booster rocket development now made the launching of missiles from a stationary structure practical, and in 1952, flight test operations were shifted to the Air Force Missile Test Center in Florida. From the launching site on Cape Canaveral, the test range reaches out over the West Indies, thousands of miles out into the South Atlantic. Ground stations on the islands follow the course of the missiles by radar and powerful tracking cameras. To test the booster rockets, dummy models were used which approximated the weight and shape of the SNARK. To further assure successful launch of the larger missiles, four of the test missiles recovered at the Holloman test range were launched from the Northrop-designed launcher. The flight testing of the SM-62 SNARK could now begin. Special instrumentation had to be provided to gather information on the performance of the missile. Sensing instruments were installed which transmit radio signals from the aircraft to the ground stations. Radar tracking for constant surveillance of the missile's position. 
telescopic lenses to photograph high altitude flight, high speed cameras to enable the engineers to study motion in fractions of seconds of time, escort aircraft equipped with cameras and equipment for radio control of the missile, underground shelters to protect test personnel and equipment from rocket blast, complicated electronic equipment to record flight data, and communications equipment to coordinate the work of the hundreds of Northrop and Air Force personnel involved in the test operations. All personnel clear the area. T minus one minute. Mark. T minus fifteen seconds. T minus ten seconds. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. The capabilities of the SNARK have been proven by flight testing of the airframe and the independently tested, still secret, guidance system. The culmination of a tremendous engineering effort to provide the Air Force with the most modern and effective weapons to deter the aggressors and for quick retaliation in the event of an attack against the United States. <laughs> 